He's in a bad way now. Here we go, guys. Tag team action is underway. Guys, there's nothing like a good old-fashioned tag team match. Guys, some are saying this superstar has begun showing a bit of arrogance since the latest weekly rankings were released. But the way I see it, that's just confidence. There certainly is a fine line between arrogance and confidence, as Byron was saying, but whatever it is, I have no problem with it. This superstar has been on an absolute roll as of late. And who really cares if somebody's being arrogant? As the old saying goes, if you got it, flaunt it. And this superstar certainly has it. I gotta say, guys, I have been incredibly impressed by what we've seen from this superstar in recent weeks. That kick had purpose. He's starting to stumble here. It's decision time, Cole. Does he try to get back on the offensive himself, or does he attempt to make a tag here? Well, Byron, you're not the only one impressed by what you've seen as of late. It seems these responsible for the weekly rankings have also taken notice because the superstar comes into tonight with quite an impressive spot. And well-deserved, too, I might say. It just goes to show that wins here in WWE go a long way in solidifying your spot on the roster. Incredible striking cut. Seems to me, guys, like we're just moments away from seeing the finisher, which could obviously put this match on ice. Going for the arm. The finisher could absolutely end this match, Michael, as you were saying, but it's not a guarantee. Sometimes it takes two or even three to get the job done, and even then, it's not a sure bet. A la Randy Savage versus the Ultimate Warrior at WrestleMania 7. That's my favorite match of all time. Randy Savage landed an amazing five top rope elbow drops, but was still unable to put Warrior away. And you know what? He probably could have hit him with five more. There was just no stopping the Warrior on that one. He goes for the cover. Digging deep for a kick out. It's hard to believe, but it looks like he still has some gas left in the tank. He wants to do this in the ring. Every superstar knows that the key to being a perennial main eventer is securing a favorable spot in the weekly rankings, just like this superstar did this past week. Corey's absolutely right. The weekly rankings are so very important to achieving long-term success here in the WWE. But what everybody has to realize is getting that favorable ranking is only half the battle. That's right. Now comes the hard part, maintaining that ranking. When you're ranked as high as this superstar, you can bet your back has a gigantic target on it. Angelo Dawkins, he's inflicting some serious pain here. Now it's time to capitalize. He's got him covered. One, and the kick out by Fish. Not yet. Tagged in. <laughs> Stiff kick there. 
During the rivalry between the Hardy Boys and Cesaro and Sheamus over the Raw Tag Team Championship, the teams became very familiar with one another. In June of 2017, the teams met in a two out of three falls bout on Monday Night Raw. The most important fall in a two out of three falls contest is the first fall. If a team can win the first fall, that sets the tone for the rest of the match and your opponents are playing catch up. The two out of three falls match to saw the Hardy Boys go at it with Cesaro and Sheamus as a throwback of sorts. Throughout the 1960s and 70s, championship title defenses and grudge matches often decided in the two out of three falls format. Cesaro and Sheamus didn't waste any time and scored the decisive first fall after a broke kick rocked Jeff Hardy. Cesaro and Sheamus wanted to continue their domination of Team Extreme, but the Hardys had other ideas as Matt tied things up at one fall apiece after a twist of fate on the Swiss cyborg. After a swanton bomb by Jeff Hardy, the match broke down and the third fall was ruled a double countout. Believe it or not, guys, this superstar wasn't overly pleased with this past week's rankings. And you know what? I tend to agree. Who's voting on this stuff anyway? And look at the quickness by Montez Ford. He's got the leg locked in now. Oh boy, he is rolling. Great job escaping, trying to turn this thing around. Oh, oh look, Bobby Fish is in position. Uh-oh. Oh, boy, he is rolling. Oh. Takes him down in a major way, too. Second time we're seeing this here. Oh, man, right to the R. Hyper extend your elbow. No, he reverses it. And look at the quickness by Montez Ford. Guys, I was in the locker room when the latest rankings were released, and I can tell you that a lot of people were shaking their heads over this superstar's ranking. He's on the defensive here. Headed into this match, he and his partner look extremely confident. It might be time for him to recharge that battery. All he has to do is get to his corner and make the tag. Well, he had to expect to take some punishment here, right? I mean, it'd be crazy for him to think he was going to walk away from this match completely on He fights his way free. But how much energy did he exhaust fighting his way out? I don't know why anybody would be shaking their head over this superstar's ranking, Corey. It's been one impressive performance after another. If you ask me, it's well-deserved. I completely agree, Michael. I wouldn't put too much stock in what Corey was saying anyway. He tends to hang with a pretty cynical crowd these days. If an opponent exhibits a weakness for a specific move, some will return to utilizing that move as long as possible. We may very well be seeing the finisher here very shortly, guys, and when that happens, you can bet this one's gonna be over. And look, it hung up on the second. Trying to exhaust every bit of air from the lungs here. Knocked off his feet. Now that's a takedown. I'm with Corey. I suspect the finisher is on the horizon, and given how impactful that move has been as of late, I'd say there's almost no coming back from it. You're right, Michael. It seems like that finisher has become more and more impactful with each passing week, but that's even possible. Tagged in. The object is to win the match, isn't it? Come on, let's go. Back now inside the ring. A lot of pride on the line here in this tag team encounter, but only two of these competitors will end up getting what they came for, the win. As Corey continues to criticize the athlete, Angelo Dawkins, this is all but over. I'm not sure how much he has left. There goes the official. Not gonna lie, that would hurt. Tagged in. A high risk maneuver in the works from that top turnbuckle. And here's Montez Ford.
showing some quickness there. Down he goes. That'll do it every time. You got to think about using the finisher here pretty soon, I would think. Just pick up the win and move on. There's no need to keep this thing going longer than necessary. And the instinct from Fish on display. So quick. Oh, look, Bobby Fish is in position. Uh-oh. Good point by Byron earlier if there's an open. And it really makes him pay in the worst way. What a shot. I knew it was only a matter of time. Here's Kyle O'Reilly into the quick cover. What a tag team display. Well, that was a tough loss. A real difficult loss for that young man. And he's got to feel bad about this, Corey. He worked hard. He worked hard, but he came up short. It's an unfortunate situation. But his partner doesn't look too pleased. No, not at all. I mean, come on, like that guy hasn't lost before? Please.